All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, this is Farouk Oxiton with the North Carolina Blockchain Initiative. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we want to get underway. We're very, very excited to have Aginga with us. This is gonna be an exciting conversation. Um, I wanna go ahead and begin the, uh, the webinar by uh, again, introducing myself and my co-chairs. Uh, I, Farouk Oxiton, wanna welcome you along with Eric Porper and Dan Spooler of the North Carolina Blockchain Initiative to, these, um, to this webinar in our continuing series uh, as we talk about innovation in blockchain in North Carolina. Uh, today we welcome a Gingo, uh, a, a well-established member of the North Carolina, North Carolina blockchain community. Uh, they have a, a, an amazing team. I've had a chance to meet them and get to know them over the years. Uh, and they're taking uh, steps in bringing their products into the forefront of blockchain use and expansion in North Carolina. We're very uh, lucky and, and uh, privileged to have them with us today. Um, we also want to thank the Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, Dan Forrest, for having the foresight and leadership in uh, looking for ways in which blockchain can influence the future of economic development and efficiencies uh, for our state. So we thank him and his team uh, who have been really good to us in giving us support and latitude and putting, putting together uh, this blockchain educational effort uh, with, the, with the web webinar series, as well as other efforts that the blockchain initiative is engaging in. And uh, we're going to culminate all of this effort and all the information we've accumulated over the last year into a final blockchain report and recommendations for North Carolina. What is the blockchain, North Carolina Blockchain Initiative? Well, the North Carolina Blockchain Initiative, NCBI, was formed on July 2nd of 2019 under the supervision of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, Dan Forrest, the strategic component of NCBI is to study, examine, and evaluate the unique attributes and use cases of blockchain technology, virtual assets, smart contracts, and digital tokens with the ultimate goal of promoting opportunities for economic growth, efficiencies, and strengthening North Carolina as a leader in technological innovation. And I want to thank all of my esteemed colleagues, uh, names you see on our uh, screen right now, uh, these, these names, uh, they come from various backgrounds. Uh, they're experts in business, policy, they come from academia, and they're all experts in their respective fields, and we're grateful for their direct contributions and support and pursuit of the fulfillment of the goals of the North Carolina Blockchain Initiative. So without further ado, uh, I am going to welcome uh, a gingo in uh, Kriakos Kaioriuris, which is uh, uh, this, who is the CTO of Agingo, and uh, we want to learn about how to invest in our own data. Now, if you have any questions throughout the webinar presentation, uh, we would encourage you to list that uh, or, or comment on chat, and uh, at the very end, we should have some time to take questions, and we encourage those questions. So uh, please feel free to type in your questions throughout the event. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my good friend Kriakos. Let me make sure I get everybody unmuted. All right, Kriakos, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to mute myself, and the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, it's not it's not lost on me that John and Christina decided to name me. Kiriakos and uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it, it's kind of the joke that I, I was how, never. How did I do? On. The, how did I do in the pronunciation of the last name? Yeah, it's Skiris. Skiris. It's Skiuris, <laughs> right? Yeah, Skiris. Yeah, it's the uh, in the south. It, it's it's a real good southern name, southern Greece. But no. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm I'm a quarter, I'm a quarter Greek. So I'm I'm uh, very. Uh, uh, Proud of the way I at least attempted that, but thank you again for joining us. Floor is yours. Yeah. I'm uh, muting. So, Agingo is a software company here that we based in North Carolina. Uh, Jacob and I have had a, a, a sympathetic, like a, a very symbiotic relationship in the sense that we both have had uh, a, a very, very, very pressing need to figure out and the injustice that's happening to people's data that's online, um, and, and that is essentially just making everybody become slaves to the data brokers. Um, and, and by both of us seeing that problem differently from both of our backgrounds, uh, Jacob um, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, Jacob comes from a banking background and I come from a cybersecurity background and we were both working on this problem at the same time. Uh, and what we wanted to do was to be able to give a way that people could actually go onto the internet and actually be treated as if they were in real life uh, and get better service and uh, anoint their, their data to the people that they wanted to, the same way that, that currency today is supposed to be voting for the better product. Um, and you know where data is today and where why it's having a harder time for people to get get their heads around it is that it's not viewed as, as kind of like the medium of exchange on the internet, even though it really is. Um, and data is what products, uh, uh, what companies and businesses rely on to be able to make those products better and, and uh, more wanted by their you know uh, significant user base. Whether that's you know uh, retail, whether it's uh, computing, whether it's uh, you know food. It, it doesn't matter, you wanna have that first party access to that data and it's really hard to get that right now online without going through one of the large data brokers. So uh, as Farouk said, we're based in North Carolina and it's a privilege to serve with uh, uh, everybody on the North Carolina blockchain initiative. Uh, we were, were dedicated to providing the individuals and organizations an effective way to control their information. This offers consumers an opportunity to safeguard everything that, about them online creating an almost uh, unique shadow or an identity of themselves for the internet that can be maintained and allow them to be able to share their valuable data with the people that they want to, the same way that you actually spend your money and buy the stuff that you want. Nobody's out there buying things that they don't want. <laughs> um, and so with the same way, same way that we're trying to go down that line, we're offering products and services to companies so that they can uh, create highly targeted and qualified leads for developing relationships with first parties, meaning their customer base, without the middleman stepping in the way and you know reselling that information. Like I said, we have a great team. Jacob, our fearless leader, uh, was an SVP at Wells Fargo. I, again, come from a cybersecurity background. I've been with blockchain since it began in 2009. Um, I, I've been developing with blockchain forever. Uh, and uh, kind of, you know, Jacob and I took the chance together to actually solve some problems uh, that uh, we both had acknowledged about blockchains, but such as speed, scalability, and the, the security. Um, so we, we uh, did that with our uh, special advisor team, which is Chris Vesis, who comes from background with the Privacy Commission. Uh, he's a, a, a very experienced entrepreneur with multiple exits, including satellite companies. Uh, we also have Steve Ellis from the banking, he's our banking advisor, who's the former head of innovation from Wells Fargo. Um, we also have Gregory McRae, uh, who's a professor emeritus from MIT, who's helped a lot with a lot of the mathematical thinking and thought that's had to go through with building the platform. Uh, and then we finally have Ted Barnhill, he's our economic advisor, that has helped us kind of curtail this into a more uh, economic feeling system so that we can start making this uh, uh, making the, the platform that, we've, that we're going to be presenting uh, uh, more like managing your money and, and to make it something that some people are already doing right now. Uh, so our key differentiators, we're able to offer uh, data products. Uh, businesses requ request what they want. Consumers are able to deposit their own money uh, and they're able to invest their own data like money. Uh, personalization, every website's asking you for everything you're actually able to, it, with, with our platform, you're going to be able to actually store and share all your consumer preferences and everything in one place so that you can actually send them out autom uh, auto uh, autonomously or uh, you'll be able to do it uh, uh, like, like as a one-by-one -one, uh, selection. Um, private communications, we're going to be releasing that in our earliest release of the uh, new client. Uh, for the release candidate. Uh, it's going to be uh, extremely fast and secure. Uh, there's no middleman involved in that as well. We're also, we've also differentiated in the sense that we put privacy controls in uh, to where the, the user can sit there and say, I don't want to get uh, any, any advertising or I don't want to get offers because I'm not looking for a car or I want to opt out of getting phone calls from XYZ company. Uh, and then we're also providing the ability for uh, companies to actually directly reward uh, their, 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 their clients, their consumers with uh, digital rewards, coupons such as like, you know, music coupons and stuff like that. Um, the, what we're also leading to and, 
and what we're or what our research and development uh, is uh, is leading us to is the next generation platform of trusted computing, which is a decentralized distributed computational model that would allow uh, a less reliance on on cloud computing and allow a lot more efficient uh, dispersion of computation across uh, multiple devices. So. Uh, I think everybody knows this problem. Um, you know, the companies are spending billions of dollars in advertising, but the cost in actually protecting the information that they're getting and how it's being stored in so many of these places is costing almost half the amount of money uh, to protect it. And then now to, to cap it off that, that 66 billion wasn't enough, CCPA spent 55 billion to try to create a new, to create the new uh, uh, governance policy out of California to be able to, to help curtail some of these problems. And, and to just highlight this, you know, $8 billion in data breaches and fines and settlements, billions on solutions and data management. And we still keep on hearing about, you know, the fat finger mistake, the, the not patched machine, the lowest, the, the, like we're, we are every company and every person is, is really putting all of their uh, responsibility on an individual that can't act as fast as a computer. And they're relying on that there not being any mistakes. And this is where blockchain can really shine, especially in the automated systems, to be able to help curtail these problems. So what did we do? So as we, we actually created a, a, a scalable blockchain platform that we call not only one blockchain, but we are highlighting uh, the first use case of it as a data exchange. Uh, and this is what we call Eureka One, discover your worth. And what we're doing is, is literally democratizing access to your own data. You will be able to control your own identity, uh, what you do, how you've done it, and control how people perceive you through our trustworthiness metric. Um, we're going to be giving uh, businesses direct access to consumers and their data without the cost and complexity that currently is around SEO and a lot of the other optimizing uh, uh, packages, like you know other things that are out there for uh, you know uh, advertising. Uh, we're using uh, the latest blockchain technology that is capable of scale, which is the new platform that I had mentioned. Uh, we're automating the marketing and data maintenance, removing the burden of PII storage on a lot of companies. And we're also hoping that with, through the use of our platform that they're going to increase the customer loyalty without spamming their customers because it will be a one-to-one -one communication with them. So how does it work? Uh, the Eureka One platform uh, is, is relatively simple to understand. Businesses need data and consumers have data. So businesses request data from consumers, consumers provide that data and then it sends it to them. Businesses get the data and businesses reward the consumers for the data. So this is actually a screenshot from the app. More, more access, so what we're doing for the businesses is actually creating more access without the cost and complexity of again, managing all, all these different tools that are out there. We're able to communicate directly with um, and privately with consumers through our, uh, our messaging platform, uh, part of a platform. Uh, and then we're also reducing the risk, privacy compliance, legal, uh, legal reliance on being able to actually do things. This should actually free businesses to actually play in, in more markets. And with the onset of GDPR, the, which is the European privacy protections, and with CCPA, this is becoming more of a reality where it's either there's going to be a solution to the problem uh, of what data and how we manage data, or there's just going to be a lot more um, escalation in the tools to fight the, 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 uh, the, the problem of the internet, which is cybersecurity and the want of the data through illicit sources. So this is kind of a really, a really high level overview of how this works. It's really as simple as that earlier slide. Users come to the Eureka app, they deposit their data, let's say shoe size, the, uh, are you buying a car? Um, are you in the market for a house? Are you looking for a wealth manager? Um, these can be any, any type of products, but the user can deposit also benign data, such as, you know, like, I'm sorry, I meant to go backwards. Um, they, they can also deposit benign data and, and also make money off of that for scientific research, machine learning programs and stuff like that. But in this scenario, the business is now going to come and request the, the data. And then a little bit of work is going to go on. This message is going to get sent out. And, and through a causal genesis, a reward is going to be created with the onset of the business getting their uh, data. So 
the technology that's behind it, I've already mentioned it, it's the non-rolling blockchain platform. We're going to be providing a, a high level mathematical model later in the presentation, but it's extremely fast. We solved uh, a lot of the challenges that were behind uh, conventional blockchains. Um, and, and that is the speed of transactions. We did not sacrifice any of the security um, uh, by lowering consensus. Uh, we didn't come up with you know, a, a multitude of different uh, uh, consensus algorithms. We, we created one that is that we call dem, uh, democratic focus. Um, and if there's more questions about that, I can answer them at the end. Um, the, this opens, and what I mentioned earlier, this opens the opportunity to create self-sovereign identities where the use of trustworthiness can actually be used akin to a, a credit score in the sense that uh, if you perform the way you say you are, or if you meet a certain criterion, uh, this identity can now be allowed to play in, in other areas. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, we actually have 11 patents, uh, two, two issued, one, two pending, uh, seven in the process of being filed. Uh, um, and, uh, but, but we have the patent, pet, the patent pending system itself uh, to de decentralize trust is so that data can be secured into multi-party transactions and to multi-party tokens and create applications that are uh, extremely more useful and, and less uh, constricting than the current state of uh, the, the, the way that we are conventionally using technology today. So the not only on blockchain in short, uh, one of the, the biggest things in how we were able to solve this was by putting most of the information into the token, uh, we're actually able to then put non-fungible data, stocks, bonds, processes, just about anything that can, you can imagine to be tokenized can be put into our token, created in an issuance and never constantly grow or the ability to have immutable ledgers of growth that can happen in tandem. So sometimes like a receiving system, for example, you only need to keep receipts. You don't need to keep everything that happened in between the receipts um, and, and or batch operations. Uh, think of it in that sense. What we wanted to do was to make it more akin uh, to the natural flow and exchange of, you know, um, uh for this uh i don't know what's a good example uh like like cash for example like so as an example a, a dollar bill uh holds a whole lot more information than what people are actually what people actually understand is on the bill there's uh, decades if not hundreds of years of cryptography there's you know you're talking about advanced mathematics on the the positioning and you know like there's uh the clock for example, on a $100 bill with Benjamin Franklin is set at a certain time. There's so many little nuances that are put onto these things that the amount of information in the digital system to represent that would be almost insurmountably larger and it would need the use of stereography or something like that. What we were able to do through our platform was actually pack all that data inside of a very, very efficient token and then be able to pass that around while maintaining the ownership and maintaining its integrity inside of the immutable database without worry of the, the typical Merkle hash structure uh, bo bottleneck of the message getting too large. Um, you know, where, where the older or the more transacted, for example, of a Bitcoin token can take a longer period of time than you know, a freshly created one um, to send over the network or to validate. Um, so the information is actually directly stored inside of the token. Uh, if you if you know what it, where where it started, you can actually uh, see its face value at, re at redemption. Um, here's a big uh, chart um, about like by comparison how the new platform stacks up against everyone else. Um, we're able to actually suffice an unlimited of ledgers. This is literally limited to the size of your hard drive and how many ledgers you want to be a part of. Um, the confirmation time within the new network itself is less than a second. Um, the potential max of transactions is based off of the network depth. So if you have 100 nodes online, it'll be able to uh, just topically say 100 nodes online can do 100 transactions per second. Um, the fixed ledger size allows uh, uh, it to run and operate because it's not this constantly growing. 290 gigabyte, um, 290 gigabyte uh, uh, ledger, like in Bitcoin, uh, or the even larger one with Ethereum that they're charting now, um, we actually can actually fix that size. So if you need a token database that is actually uh, 
10, 10 million tokens of objects or a thousand objects, those are actually stuck at that size. And, and I don't, I shouldn't say stuck, but it, it, they're actually fixed at that size so that you don't have to constantly manage that Merkle hash structure that I mentioned before. The, uh, we don't have any transaction fees. We thought that for a, a, a uh, uh, because we actually solved some of these problems, we removed the need to create an incentivized system uh, where the incentive is actually getting people to come on with the promise of money. This is the incentive is that there is no transaction fee. So uh, to use our network, as long as everything is happening in network, there is no transaction fee. We, there are transaction fees if you want to cross networks. So if you wanted to go from one, one platform to another non go platform, there would be a fee. Uh, we provide fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, this is because of the nature of our system. We're going to be in the next steps of, of trying to get that uh, accredited. Uh, we have smart contract or what we call uh, smart agreements. Uh, because of the nature of our platform, we're able to actually create these agreements to behave uh, more organically uh, uh, based off of uh, natural human behavior and transactions. Um, we wanted to make sure that this was fully decentralized. Again, as an early uh, proponent of Bitcoin and blockchain, uh, back in early 2009, uh, I, I really subscribed to the, you know, the uh, ideology that Satoshi and, uh, you know, and, and a lot of us at the time had wanted, and that was to find alternatives to make this to where that there was any centralized control and power to remove this idea of, you know, where only some people are mining and some people aren't, um, and, and to really give back to where this is, where everybody is a collaborative member of it and, and able to comp compute regardless of, uh, you know, if you have a $5,000 computer or a $50, you know, Android phone, you're not going to get a net advantage out of the system. Um, the, I had already mentioned the democratic focus. Uh, we don't use a lot of energy. Uh, again, this was designed so that we could make it work on low power devices, including phones, cameras, uh, just about anything low power. We've actually been in discussions with um, uh, some of the, in, in, from the energy, uh, 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 the in, from the industry vertical of, of uh, energy, they're uh, they're looking at us to actually uh, be on PLCs and help with communication flow, uh, and that's just for uh, uh, grid management and stuff like that. So, well, we have no uh, no need for uh, centralization. There is a capability that we offer though, and which is why we have the asterisk right there, where you can have a managing. Uh, a ring of wallets, that, that is something that has come up in some of our conversations. Um, we provide these platforms. We have two platforms. Again, Eureka One is the data exchange and it's capable. And what it's doing is the first showcase of what the new platform is. So it's the first use case of the new platform. And we're licensing both platforms right now. Uh, the Eureka One, the data exchange uh, uh, specifically and the new platform uh, both as a licensed uh, custom application and as a SaaS solution that we manage for you. Um, we also provide specific applications and development and strategic planning and services. And we have done that for uh, some of the large cloud automakers. So here's our roadmap. Um, we've been in development for a uh, little bit less than three years, uh, or a little bit over, sorry. Um, the, Eureka One uh, and new R and D is going to be completed by the uh, by the beginning of uh, quarter three, uh, where we'll be launching the developer network, where we will be providing APIs and a full stack, an executable client, uh, a command line client, as well as uh, APIs and documentation and access to a, a developer network for resources. Uh, we're before the end of the year that we. Uh, we'll be onboarding our customers uh, uh, for, through the Eureka platform, and that's users and businesses alike. Um, we're planning on providing and uh, um, solving um, the, the data-driven coupon initiative that's being started right now uh, across the uh, marketing industry to help better uh, help a lot of the people who are challenged right now economically through the COVID crisis. Um, we're planning on creating the partner network by uh, quarter two of 21. Uh, next year. And then we're going to be providing data intelligent products, which is what I'm most excited about for next year by quarter three. Um, uh, I'm going to be giving it to Eli Miller right now, our resident uh, mathematical uh, genius. 
He's going to be uh, demonstrating the new mathematical model that everyone just to show the scale and capability of it. Hey, good morning, everyone, and thanks, Kiriakos. Um, let me just share my screen. Yeah, let me see if I can stop here. There you go. All right. So I am a data scientist for Gingo, but my background is in mathematics. Um, and with Kiriakos and Jacob and some of our advisors, I've been working on developing some of the algorithms that are in the Noob system. Um, what I'm gonna to demonstrate today is um, a lot of the mathematical concepts um, and algorithms that we've built into the Noob code. Um, this is based on a lot of very conservative assumptions um, of uh, ping rate, et cetera. But what we will demonstrate is that this scales as the network depth grows. Um, so what I've done first is just brought up uh, 100 nodes. And what we'll show you is that it's easily capable of 100 transactions in uh, over the course of 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So I'll just show you. These are the 100 nodes we've brought up uh, across the world. We've simulated. And um, what you can see here is that we've simulated the sender, receiver, and all of the validators all the way through 100 transactions over the course of a second. Um, what I'll show next is trying to achieve 1,000 transactions with those same 100 nodes. And what you're going to see is that it will fail. Transaction limit exceeded. However, once we run it with um, 1,000 nodes, which I'll show you really quickly, brought up a thousand nodes over the world and what you can see now is that we've got the same data set although now with a thousand transactions over the course of one second um, and we can easily extend this to 10,000 which I'll show you um, very quickly 10,000 nodes with the with 10,000 members. Um, and for the interest of time, won't go past that, but um, as we can demonstrate, the throughput of the network will scale uh, at, at the very least linearly. We believe that um, as the network grows, we may be even, uh, validation may be even faster because um, ping rate will decrease stuff like that and like i said this is a very conservative assumptions but um we're very excited about what we demonstrated and that we can achieve infinite throughput as the network grows and i'll throw it back to kiriakos Oh, there we go. It's unmuted. All right. So if we could just open it up to, to questions, if there are any uh, as of right now, um, then I'd be happy to answer any of those. Yeah, feel free to um, uh, write into the group chat area if you guys have any questions. Um, I don't see anything coming in yet, and it's uh, more of an indication uh, of how great of a job you guys did. Okay, Sophia uh, Kriakos, so I'm going to go ahead and read Sophia's uh, question. If I understand correctly, you created your own blockchain. Yes. Yeah, so we, from development from scratch, uh, iconically and, and a little comedically was uh, me and Jacob had an office at UNCC uh, here in Charlotte. Uh, and we went for a walk while everybody, uh, the Bitcoin craze was happening uh, in 2017 or the blockchain craze in general. Uh, and uh, because of my background, we, we had a long talk and it was, do we just want to do a smart contract system or like with, with an Ethereum or anything? And, you know, I looked at it and I was like, I'd rather just fix the problems. And we decided for, we decided right then and there uh, to actually build this from scratch. We built it from scratch in C++, gruelingly. 
Um, we've had a lot of challenges along the way in creating it, but uh, once we solved a lot of the mathematical problems, which Eli was able to uh, demonstrate um, in, our, in, in the R simulation, uh, we were actually able and have uh, in testing right now a system that scales and grows. Um, we did not use or copy any code from, from uh, Bitcoin or any of the others. Uh, I essentially put blinders on to make sure that I didn't get any bias into thinking how we would do, do that development. Um, we spent about six months doing architecture and developing out uh, and putting together the theoretical models for uh, the mathematics. Uh, and everything, and we had resources while we were at UNCC with uh, a lot of the uh, mathematical chairs that, that were there with us. Um, it was a great resource. We ended up moving offices, but uh, since then and, and during this period of time, uh, getting through those uh, computing, like the technical challenges, uh, really, 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 really were a lot harder than what we had thought then, but uh, has been very gratifying uh, and, and to see a system that actually works. And we're proud to actually uh, present that can work the way that, that, that it's been promised. Thank you, Kriyako. See, I, I only read the first part of her question, but I think you already answered her second part, but I'm gonna ask it anyway, uh, if you wanted to add to your comments. She, she did ask, Sophia asked, why did you choose to create your own blockchain over say EOS chain, uh, you know, fastest? So, so EOS still has a, a, a quite a few different challenges that are that are part of conventional blockchain technologies. So I, I usually try to stay away from a lot of the more technical uh, conversations because they can be, um, you know, uh, I get I get accused of talking um, to uh, high level or low level technical. Um, EOS still has a problem of block producers and there's 21 targets. Um, it also has a problem of growing ledger. It, it doesn't have any, any, you know, trash keeping capability. Um, the the idea that the information has to be always held instead of always transacted with uh, is kind of uh, it just personally antithetical to thermodynamics and how how physics works for me. Um, and what we tried to do is keep this based off of found, uh, off of the foundation of, of good mathematics and. and to, to actually flush out the issues before we went wildly stating things that um, that we weren't certain yet uh, were capable of. And, and I think that most people can agree that whether it's EOS, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, any one of the thousand other chains that are out there, uh, a lot of them have fallen short from what they've been able to actually say that they can accomplish. Um, while EOS is able to be a lot faster, it's still going to have a bottleneck. Um, and what, what I mean by that and why we wanted to have our scalable platform was we started looking at uh, like Visa and MasterCard, for example, they want to have a transactional throughput by, by this year of, of 25 billion transactions a, a day. And to break that out, it comes out to be a bright around three, 347,000 transactions a second. Um, and in our early mathematical model that we had done and proven some of our math, we actually demonstrated that using the system that we had architected um, and it now uh, are in the last final processes of, of just ironing it out and getting it ready for showtime, uh, it's capable of actually, um, of, of actually achieving that with a little bit less than, a little bit over 100,000 nodes online. Um, that, is, that was a lot more important to us. We, we, we really wanted to shoot for the moon and land on it. Um, instead of, you know, promising the moon and staying stuck on ground. Um, and uh, we, we, we were not trying to say from an arrogant perspective. We, we, we literally believe that there can't only be one blockchain. There's use for so many of them, um, especially when you start seeing the ones that have actually curtailed and, and kind of isolated and found their niche into, into systems. Um, uh, and th that are actually in production, but they're far and few from the ones that I've actually uh, come across or even have in my hand right now, aside from, you know, like, like the wallets that are out there uh, that, that a lot of people have on their phones, but they're not necessarily integral applications that are actually driving real business or, uh, or, or real consumer demand for that matter. It, it's the way that I put it before is that if electricity uh, is similar to, to, to blockchain, um, then how many people do you really know that understand how electricity and a light bulb works? All right. And then how many people do you really know that understand how blockchain works? And, and it's not meant to be something that, that's condescending. It, it's meant to be 
everybody knows how to cut on a light switch. It's, it's, we're waiting for blockchain to have that light switch moment where, where it becomes useful and part of our daily lives. And what we wanted to do was to build something that was akin to that. Um, while I, I'm not trying to say that, that that's not what other people were trying to build, um, I think that our approach has been a lot more uh, uh, in line with, with achieving that. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. That was uh, a great explanation. And I hope, Sophia, that, that answers uh, your question in full, but feel free to ask any others. I do have some other uh, questions coming in. Um, this came in just now. Uh, how do you convince consumers to contribute their data, everyday consumers to contribute their so, data to this platform? So because I haven't talked to a lot of people in a while, because it's been COVID, uh, I was a little nervous and I forgot to mention that during the beginning of, during the slide. Uh, but uh, in the middle of the slide, when I was presenting, uh, it, it had, what happens is, is that we are, uh, a Eureka One Exchange is literally giving 50% back to members, 25% to non-members, and, and all that is, is based off of your activity. So if you're a good member for a next period of amount of time, you become a full member and you start getting more. Uh, you, you literally share the profit uh, through reward system of what, uh, what Eureka One Exchange is getting the data for. So uh, uh, similar to think like SurveyMonkey or something like that, that's able to get, get direct connect. This is more than just the surveys. This is surveys and coupons and communications and uh, reward systems and stuff like that all can go in here. And this can also be just data itself. Um, you know, that, that, that again, I had mentioned that it could be used for scientific computing. You deposit this data and it's an automated function for as long as you keep your, the app on, on, you'll get these messages coming across saying that, that businesses want your information. So with the promise of having uh, uh, a reward for, for sharing your information with the people who you already want to share it with, we believe is, is quite sufficient to get people uh, wanting to capitalize on their own data. So, uh, I mean, and, and I, I think that there's a net benefit and there's a significant want from the business side to help drive that initiative uh, because getting access to that first party data is gonna it decrease their costs and create huge efficiencies for them uh, across the board, whether it be risk and, and just the, the managing of the data itself in, in warehouses uh, and, and eliminate them from ever, you know, getting those, you know, dreaded, uh, you know, 100 million credit cards hacked or, Hundred million, you know, people's information is being sold for three dollars online, um, like with Equifax and stuff like that. So, uh, the whole hope here and what we are pushing forward with is that customers are going to come because businesses want the information, but customers also want to get paid for their data. Um, you know, if everybody got fifty, like what we've been modeling this out is that a low to moderate user would get anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars a month. Uh, equivalent in, in rewards. So, and, and I think everybody can agree that 50 to 100 bucks a month is, is, is relatively beneficial right now to everybody. So that's where we are with them. Okay, thank you, uh, Kriakos. I've got another one. Are you focused on the blockchain that you've created or the data solution for consumers? You know, which one, uh, so I guess, you actually prioritize? So this gets into a nuance of technical, um, you know, it's, we are focused on the Eureka One platform as of right now. Uh, we spent most of this time building the new platform. Um, we did run into challenges uh, trying to sell a platform, like if there are investors on this call, um, it, it's very difficult selling a platform, especially in North Carolina. And uh, me and Jacob are very good North Carolina boys and didn't want to go to California, didn't want to go to New York. Um, so we've kind of, it's been a little bit more grueling because of that. Now, are we focused on the noob or Eureka? To us, that is one and the same. It's literally just changing the tokens out. Um, there's not much the difference between them up besides that. Uh, and, you know, other than naming conventions and how it's associated. Um, I've actually got the uh, Eureka One platform actually up now uh, to be able to show uh, just a, a very, very basic. We haven't put it through the the artist's hands yet, so uh, bear with us. It's just a, uh, a bare uh, background, but uh, we are focused on the uh, Eureka One Exchange currently. Uh, we, again, finished the development for uh, Noob and are, are literally just finishing touches to make sure that we're putting out a secure product that's not gonna uh, you know, uh, 
cause any harm or anything to anybody's phone. So that's about it or, or anything else. Okay, and I think as we're wrapping up, um, there's, there's another one that came in from Sophia. I wanted to definitely cover that one. Uh, you're giving 25% back. Is that the form of dividend? Is there staking tokens then? And what are the cross-platform fees? Yeah, so, so, so we, we have a lot of technologies and I, I'd be a, a lot happier to, I'd be happy to give uh, more information. And in, in if you go to our website, we have two websites, uh, the, the dingo.com page and the noob.io, you can see a lot more of the technical stack. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, I just blanked for a second. Um, I'm happy to reread it. Would you? Would yeah, you like to yeah, it? If you don't mind. No, no worries, no worries. There's like three questions there, but um, you're giving 25% back. Is uh -huh. that the form of dividends? Is there staking tokens then? And what are the cross-platform fees? Okay, so cross-platform fees is something that we're actually solving right now. Uh, we, we don't have that completely built out, um, but we're in the final stages of approvals for it with our, with, uh, with our team. Uh, the final thing that we're working on uh, the twenty five percent back we're giving up to fifty percent back of every transaction um, the uh, I'm sorry Jacob's gonna be answering this question for me he's in the background my CEO <laughs> uh, what is it Jake? so okay so the the language that he wants me to use so Eureka one is creating it, it's creating the tokens all right so you like the way that Eureka ones is Eureka One works is that Eureka One is creating the, the, the plates, right, to, to, to create a token, right? And then the user satisfies and fills in that part of the token and then sends it to the business. Um, so it's three parts. And because of that, we're able to, in flight, actually have a response that we call causal genesis that actually then at completion of, as soon as a user is, has given them the data, uh, they are then paid out explicitly from the actual agreement. Uh, we're using it from the agreement. It is not staked. It's not, um, uh, they're not actually created until they're actually, uh, the, until there's actually an event uh, for them to be created. And that way we eliminate the whole, um, um, uh, just the pool of coins as a target. That was the whole concept about that, is that you can't attack anything if nothing's there. Okay, thank you. Um, on that note, I think it's a good time to stop. We're right at 1045. And um, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, obviously, thank you to the Gingo, uh, Eli, Kriakos, Jacob for joining us. Uh, again, these are uh, true innovators from here in North Carolina. Uh, please go to gingo.com, reach out to, to, uh, uh, to them directly if you have any further questions, or uh, feel free to visit ncblockchain.tech. Uh, the yeah. website for the North Carolina Blockchain Initiative, and you can actually send any info and any future questions you may have on this or other webinars to info at block, excuse me, info at ncblockchain.net, and we'd be happy to forward those. Uh, a recorded version of this uh, webinar is going to be uh, on our YouTube page, North Carolina Blockchain Initiative YouTube page, so please feel free to visit those. All of our past webinars are on there. And, and again, it was a pleasure, uh, again, go to welcome all of you in Kriakos. Thank you so much, all of our participants, all of our um, uh, esteemed members of the Blockchain Task Force, uh, and of course, Lieutenant Governor's Office and his team. We thank you all. Uh, we have, uh, we'll have another announcement this week for our next webinar, which should be in two weeks, again, Tuesday morning. And please tune in for that. And, and thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.